Thank you for coming to Using Social Media to Extend Your Reach. I am Joe Akers, Director of Marketing. And in this class, we're going to go through some of the basics, kind of go over some of the different social media channels that are available to you to promote yourself and to market yourself and kind of uh, discuss a little bit about each one of them and how they can benefit you the best and also go over some tips and tricks in terms of creating content for these social media channels um, that will make your life a bit easier. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and get, get started. So think of the social media platforms as uh, receptacles for, for the content that you create. But it can be anything from blog posts to just a photo that, of something during your day. Um, but your content is going to go to each one of these. And we're going to talk about how you can make content that can be used across all of these platforms. It's just that you have to keep in mind what these platforms are best used for. So there are a lot of social media platforms and they're ones that start and launch daily. I'm sure some of you know things like TikTok and, and things of the like, um, but we're gonna go with these uh, six here that are kind of the big major players uh, as our main focus for this class. So looking at the social media platforms, we'll go over each one of them just a little bit with some information to kind of help, um, to help put things in perspective. So with Facebook, as of 2019, about 68% of US adults say they, they use Facebook or they have an account. So that is pretty huge. Um, Facebook is really gonna be your major market player in terms of how you can reach folks. Um, everybody else has um, their pros and cons and it really kinda is going to boil down to your personality and what you're comfortable with. Uh, but getting back to Facebook, um, right now there's two billion plus active users and active users means how many people have actually logged in to use that social media platform uh, within the past 30 days. It has the highest number of users, 65 plus, which is something to keep in mind in terms of who you might be marketing to. Instagram, um, we have over a billion monthly active users. Um, something to take note of is that when I taught this class last year, it's gone up 100 million. So it was 400 million active daily users for um, Instagram stories. That's gone up 100 million. So that is something for you to keep in mind is creating stories um, on Instagram. 90% of Instagram users say they follow at least one business and 68% of those users are female. So again, things to keep in mind in terms of how you approach marketing on that platform. Pinterest, 81% of users are female there. Um, majority are below age 40, 87% um, purchased because of Pinterest, and 93% uh, use Pinterest to plan purchases. I will tell you that we utilize uh, Pinterest because we create uh, a Pinterest page that is centered around the house, the home, and the surrounding area. So what you'll find when you go to our age known Pinterest page, recipes, you will find holiday themed uh, boards, you will find organization around the house, you will find DIY crafts, we'll, you will find gardening tips, things that would involve being around the home. But not only that, you will also see uh, our homes that are for sale. If it's listed, we're gonna put images if they're great images. And we also put rentals and things of that nature. And I will tell you that it, the homes that are for sale are the ones that get the most uh, traffic. So what we've done is create an environment where people are thinking about their home, they're planning and using a lot of valuable information with things that we pin. And then while they're at it, they take a look at home. So we're driving traffic. Pinterest is actually one of the top 10 sources of referral traffic to the main agent-owned website. So that's something to keep in mind, and we're very happy with that. Um, moving over here down to Twitter, uh, 300 plus million active monthly users. The majority, and we'll kind of, it says the majority access via mobile for social media. I will tell you that about 91% of social media users access their social media uh, accounts via mobile. So that's something also to keep in mind. But for Twitter, majority access it via mobile and 80% of accounts are outside the US. For those reasons, I kind of say that Twitter is not really the best place to be. If you want to create a Twitter account in which you post your house listings, um, that might be great because Twitter users use Twitter to learn new things and discover things. But Twitter is extremely fast paced. 
So that's something to keep in mind if time is of the essence for you. All right, YouTube, two things to point out before I get started with that. One is that as an agent owned agent, every one of you have a uh, YouTube account that you can utilize and set up to have videos on it. One of the things that I'll point out and you can see it in some of my other classes is that you can use it to post videos or tutorials or things like that if you're gonna have maybe a buyer seminar or something along those lines, but you can't use um, a virtual walkthrough or something like that uh, on your MLS because there's going to be branded things that could pop up, um, ads could pop up, you could get fined for that. So, but you do have an account that you can use. And second, video is a huge thing. 67% um, of social media users consider video to be the most transparent of the posts that they view online. Obviously, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, you can make the perfect photo and you can look the best you can. The house can look the best that it can. But with video, it's kind of, it's a little bit harder to hide everything. So. Uh, there's a lot more trust and a lot more engagement with video as well. 96% of US internet users uh, access Facebook and 50% of US internet users are um, age 75 plus. That seems like a weird number, but I'll tell you why that is. The reason is uh, those folks in that age range will go online to find old videos of old TV shows or uh, old music that they can't find anywhere else. So you have a, a, a variety of people in terms of an audience for YouTube to use. Um, LinkedIn. You may not think LinkedIn is great, but LinkedIn is great for um, more commercial things, I would think. If you're doing land or if you're doing commercial uh, listings, things like that, you have a lot of executives that are uh, part of LinkedIn. So you can access those people who might be looking to expand their business, might be looking to scale. Uh, and it also, so you have 303 million monthly active users. Of that, only a million have published an article on LinkedIn. You have the ability to post articles or blog posts on LinkedIn. And because you have such a large number of users and such a small number of people who are actually putting content on there like that, you kind of have a captive audience. So it's something to consider. If you're part of the leads list and you're writing blog posts, you can either link to them or take that same information and put that in your LinkedIn profile as an article and kind of present yourself as an expert in a certain field. There's a number that I saw recently that it's 277% more effective than Facebook for leads. Now, that may be based on more commercial and executive or business to business marketing, but it's something to consider in terms of there is kind of a, a slightly untapped market that you might be able to jump into and uh, market to people a niche sort of way. Um, and just as perspective, there's uh, more than three and a half billion people access the internet as of 2019. That's 45% of the world population. So you have a huge audience in front of you on the internet that you can reach and you can speak to. Now, that may be daunting and may be a little bit scary, but let's kind of look at some of the ways that you can do that without overwhelming yourself. So in terms of some of the best uses for social media, I've kind of divided them up into three different categories and some are great for everything, some are great for just one. But in terms of building brand loyalty, and that means an agent owned as a brand, you yourself are developing yourself as a brand, and basically you have an opportunity to present content and provide valuable content to people and they trust you. They follow you and they follow what it is that you have to say and they wanna hear what the next thing is that you might have to say. So Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are great for building brand loyalty. For generating web traffic, Facebook and Pinterest, it, it's great. Uh, LinkedIn and YouTube are both the same way because you can supply links and people are gonna research you and try to figure out what you're all about and for demonstrating expertise, every single one of them. There are ways that you can post uh, to each one of these social media platforms that's gonna provide information to people that make you a trusted source of that information. A few things to consider for the social media channels. For Facebook, the organic reach, which means just I post something and you see it by chance, or you are a friend of mine, or you follow my business and you see it that continues to decline. And Facebook can say whatever they want to, but the reason for that is, is they want you to buy ads. If you are providing content of value, 
uh, content of high quality and content relevant to what you say you do for a living, that they will put an importance on that information and they will show it to people who would be most interested in it. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do ads, but you do need to provide relevant and timely information that has a lot of value to it. For Facebook, links, images, and video are allowed, which is huge, so that if you make a post and you want to drive people to a certain location, a certain website, landing page, contact form, you can do that. Um, and because you have images and video, you have a wide variety of resources to capture people's attention. Uh, a business page is a must. You should not be using your personal Facebook page to market yourself and uh, promote yourself as a business. You should create a business page, not only because it's not a good idea for you, people to know all of your personal business. Business pages offer a wealth of information, a lot of data for you to go and look at to understand who it is that is interested in what you have to say so that you can adjust and optimize what you say and what value you offer to everyone so that more of those people flock to you. Um, and I have a class that I have put together called Creating a Facebook Business Page that you can find in the Agent Own Training section. And I would highly recommend that you watch that. And uh, if, you, if you're using a personal page solely for business. If it's a personal page that you use all the time and you're also doing um, promoting some of your business stuff, that's fine. Leave that be and create a business page. But if you've created a personal page that you use solely for business, there's also instructions in there uh, about how to migrate that so you don't have to do as much work. Some things to consider for uh, Instagram, you're only allowed one link in your profile. And you can change that uh, based on what you're trying to promote at the time, but you only have one. You can post a, a, a little bit more in the Instagram stories, but you're limited in terms of what features you have until you hit 100K followers or more. I am excited for you if you do that, but it's not necessarily the most realistic thing, especially if you're starting out. But it is a highly visual medium. It's a great tool for awareness, for people to understand that you exist and what you're all about. Pinterest. Um, it requires commitment to curate, so you're going to have to kind of actively use it and post new things. I would definitely recommend that you find the agent own, and I'll put a, a link here for you so you can use it, but I would definitely recommend going to the Pinterest page for agent owned, and you can repin any of the stuff that we do and create your own page with valuable information. Um, we, we always encourage that with our Facebook page, with Instagram, with anything that we do, you can reshare that, that's fine. We're creating that content for uh, Agent Own and for you. If you've got a friend or a family member that's really great at it, we do. Uh, Barbara, who works at the front desk at Mount Pleasant, loves Pinterest, and she has taken the Pinterest page from about 305 monthly visitors to about uh, 40,000 monthly visitors. So it's a huge jump, and it's a huge traffic generator. Twitter. It's fast paced. You do have the opportunity to put links, images, and video, um, but it's the, it's kind of a little bit too much. So it might be too much for people to invest that time into, but there are ways that you can uh, automate your posts to either Instagram or Facebook that will automatically post to Twitter. Um, and that's something maybe in a more advanced class that we'll talk about. For your YouTube channel, you have free uploads, but those contain ads unless you pay. You don't need to pay. It's fine to have the ads. One thing to just consider is if you don't have control of the ads that are posted. So I, I'm sure they'll probably ha they probably have an algorithm that tries to help with what it is, maybe the age of the viewer that signed up or who might be on there, but you don't have control of those ads. So that's something to consider. And again, one of the reasons why MLS doesn't allow them. And you have limited customization. So there's not a lot that you can do, but you can add links in your comments or in the description of the video so you can drive people a certain place. And LinkedIn, a commercial focus, like I mentioned before, may be the best um, angle to go at with LinkedIn, but it's also great from peer, for peer to peer. So you're a real estate agent and you're talking about uh, issues that affect you and other real estate agents. And if you start writing articles about that, you can create a great network of folks who might be able to help you find leads if they can't help them. And the posting guidelines for things on there are kind of vague, so there's not you know, a lot of information about how best to do that. So we kind of gone through a wealth of information about the basics of these different social media channels, but let's talk about now how to use them to the best of your ability. And so the first thing that I'm gonna say is that your key to success is value and volume. So you need to create content that is of value to your um, target audience, 
things that they will be interested in, things that answer questions that they might be asking, and that positions you as an expert. And you want to have a volume so that you're not posting something once a month so people forget about you. You want to stay in front of people and stay top of mind. So like I say here, you should consistently produce high quality content and it will help you grow your audience by doing that. If you do it on an irregular basis and you don't create some sort of consistent uh, content, it's gonna be a hard uh, sell for you to get them to pay attention or look forward to what it is that you provide. So what is the secret weapon? Here's the secret weapon, something called pillar content. Some of you may know what this is, some of you may not. Pillar content essentially is a large form or a long form piece of content that you've created that you can actually break up and create smaller, more digestible pieces for that audience that may not want to read a long blog post, but you can take that and make it work for all of the social media channels that you use. Let's take a look at what that is. So like we said, Pillar content being a substantial piece of content that you can break up. So that could be things such as a blog post, like if you're on the leads list. Now, if you're writing blog posts and you're not part of the leads list, um, you're missing out. So you should definitely look into that and contact Liz S. Ebooks. You could create an ebook that could be something along the lines of, uh, you know, 10 ways to prepare your home for listing or best ways to find the right financing. It could be anything. It could be five pages, it could be 10 pages, but it could be something with a longer form bit of content that you're providing. Videos, obviously, as we've talked about before. Infographics, you can do some research, can create an infographic that will explain or answer questions for people. Reports, whether it be a report on your area that you're farming or something along those lines, and then you can have images and factoids and data that support what you're talking about, and you can break that up. As a realtor, you're an expert on buying and selling homes. You can use that expertise to create the content that you need. But what if you're a new agent? You can interview members of our sister companies where you're answering questions that a, a home buyer or a home seller might really want to know. But that is either a blog post with an interview, a video interview, both, but that gives you content to work with. So we'll kind of go through some of these pillar content examples just to see how we would break those things down. So let's take a look at this headline, 10 things you must do to get your home ready to sell. So that is a compelling title. It's encouraging your reader to take a look at and you're creating a sense of urgency. Well, I must. Well, then I definitely need to read this. Then you have an, a thoughtful opening paragraph with some quote worthy lines, some great information that you could extract from that and it would still hold a lot of weight. Um, concise, highly valuable information for each topic. Each one of those has an image that goes along with it to demonstrate what you're trying to explain. Um, like I say down here, blog posts created as part of the leads list are a great way to create the pillar content because you can use those blog posts that you do for the leads list and break that down. If you follow this formula, if you do something very quick that's like three sentences and just to kind of get by with no visuals or anything like that, not only will your blog post not really attract the attention that you want, but then you don't have a lot of additional content to use as pillar content like we're talking about here. So you want to create a blog post that has a compelling headline, thoughtful opening paragraph with those quote worthy lines that you could pull, high quality relevant photos for each one of those items on the list, um, and then that valuable information that you could break up into those topics. I'm gonna hop over real quick and show you a website that might help you in terms of, I don't know what to write. Um, it's just something to kind of get a fire under your rear end and get you writing about something. Maybe you're stumped for ideas for a blog post that you might wanna write. Um, this website here, and I'll put the, the website uh, URL over the screen uh, while we're doing this so you see it. But um, this is a fun little thing and you can see I've already played around with it. So just type in what you're thinking about writing about. So just for example, we're gonna do real estate. Click the arrow and then it gives you a structured title to a potential blog post that you could then write something, uh, some content around. But um, it even gives you why they chose the different things. So what the Beatles could learn from real estate. I mean, it makes no sense, but it also is very intriguing. Someone might want to actually read the, the post. 
but um, you can see in the first section, questions stimulate critical thinking and make readers feel smart. There you go. Um, capitalizing on trends is a smart tactic, so if you want to make up your own title, you can follow these guidelines as well. And then, so if you would like to just uh, switch that up, you hit the refresh button and you have a brand new, uh, some of them are silly, but it could spur some ideas or it may give you a, a blog title that's perfect and you can write around that. But these are kind of designed with a, a lot of sort of uh, psychological uh, things in mind in terms of grabbing people's attentions. But uh, attention, so you can take a look at each one of these um, that a lot of them um, explain why they use that. So let's just hit it again. Well, there you go. How real estate can help you predict the future. It seems a little bit odd, but it could intrigue people to want to read that. And then you could write an article about it. And, and this could be something where you're talking about different trends that you see in real estate and what those trends have historically shown over time. So this is a really great um, uh, tool to use to just give you a few ideas to get, uh, get the ju juices flowing. Okay, so I hope that website was helpful to you. I think it's a really cool cool thing and it's it's very simple and sometimes silly, but it at least gets you gets the creative juices flowing and gets you thinking about things. Let's take a look at that blog post. We wrote 10 things you must do to get your home ready to sell. Now, how do we take that pillar content and as you see here, we've got pillars. How do we break those up? So, let's say for Facebook, we've written that blog post. Now we can create a link to the blog post. That's one post that you have. Then you've got 10 photos that you included for each one of those 10 things that you talked about. So you're creating extra content that you can post somewhere else, but then you're also driving people back every time you post one through 10 of those images, you're driving people back to your blog post. So you're creating traffic, people are gonna read what you have to say, and hopefully they're gonna wanna hear more. LinkedIn, so this is my little icon for a article. So you would take that blog post and either link like embed it or link it so there's a preview of it to send people to your blog post or you, if you want to you can take that entire blog post and repost it on LinkedIn and then you can have internal links that send them back to your page. Twitter, obviously you would tweet a link to the blog post and then again for the same way that you the same structure that you do Facebook you would have reason number one, reason number two, reason number three and it has a photo which is visually appealing and then that reason and then you always link back to your blog post to get the rest of the reasons. Instagram, same thing. You could make a post that says a new blog post is up, link in my bio, and send people to that blog post. And then again, you can break it up into each one of those reasons is a single post. For Pinterest, what we're gonna do is we would maybe create an infographic that talks about the 10 things you must do, and that would work well. And then you'd have an image with text overlay. So if you look at that, you have a single blog post that you've written and you have 46 different pieces of content to share across the social media. That's one blog post gives you all of this information that you can work with. It's pretty cool. I like pillar content. Um, so here's an example of like an Instagram post where you're basically taking a photo from one of your reasons that you need to things that you need to do to get your home ready to sell. And so you've got the photo of it, you may give a description here, and then at the end of it you say, click the link in my bio for the rest of the reasons. And that drives people to their bio, see they read more about you, and then they click on the link, and then they learn more about what you have to say. And I wanna follow this person, but this is just one of 10 different photo posts that you have. And you have now have 10 posts that you can put together and. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. So um, I taught this class last year and since then I have been promoting and pushing virtual open houses and virtual showings. Uh, now more than ever it's an important thing. Everybody's talking about doing them but if you do a virtual open house on your Facebook business page you could have hundreds of people potentially viewing that open house. But anyway that virtual open house that you record is a walkthrough of the home with a narrative of the various features and the wonderful things about the house. And once you have that video, you can post that uh, as a blog post, but you could also then create an article that's talking about it, create an event. You've got the video that you can post. You can take snapshots of various things in the house that were really great. All of these would link back to the virtual open house. Same thing with YouTube. You could put it up on your YouTube channel 
and that's creating content for people to see on your YouTube channel that links to that listing or it links to your uh, agent portal so people can contact you. Twitter, you can create a, a few posts with information about that virtual open house, answering questions. Um, say, you know, watch this virtual open house and let me know of any questions that you have. Then again, you have little snapshots that you might use. Instagram, you can break that video up into smaller stories and use that as part of the um, Instagram stories that 500 million people uh, access on a daily basis. And then obviously you have a, a photo that you can take of and say, I, you know, virtual open house this weekend. Join me, click the link so you'll know when it's happening. And again, on Pinterest, those snapshots, you can create a little overlay, text overlay saying what that feature is and that link goes back to your virtual open house. So all of this stuff drives the audience back toward you um, and as potential leads. So that one virtual open house that you created has created 26 pieces of content. And that's a conservative number. It could be even more than that, depending upon the engagement that you have, the questions that people ask you, because every time you answer a question, and if enough people ask a question in one of your posts, you create another post about that one question because you know it's something that people are interested in hearing. Here's just a little quick um, example of what that could be. So let's say Margaret Marco does a virtual open house. Well, now she makes a post saying that it's happening now. And then that's her post. Then she posts a link to the video. And then she has different snapshots like this around the house that explain what the feature is or answer a question that somebody might have from a previous post. Um, and that's, uh, again, it's one of the 26 pieces of content from just that one event that you did. And a lot of these things are things that you are going to be doing on a regular basis as part of your job anyway. So why not gather content from that and put it out there? So let's say you do a lunch and learn, and that could be anything from you put together a Tuesday, you teach a Tuesday class for agent owned, or you do a buyer or seller seminar, or you do some other mortgage seminar where you have a special guest that comes in from maybe prosperity or something along those lines, and you record that. Once you've recorded that, you can post it live, and then you can have someone help you answer any questions that might come up while you're having the class. Then you can make a post that you have it, and please come and join me. You can post the video itself um, saying, take a look at the video today and leave any questions you have below or email me. Then again, you take the snapshots. Um, and that is something that might be a great bit of information that came from that lunch and learn that you really want people to know. And you're always linking back to either your contact information or that particular post or that particular piece of content. Again, YouTube has the video, Instagram has the article uh, talking about it, snapshots, and on and on. It really just, it's a formula that you can repeat over and over again. So just a quick example of the lunch and learn. So you have on YouTube, you're gonna post that video and then you can send that link to people. You can't put it on MLS or anything, but you can send it on your uh, Facebook business page uh, you can post on any of your social media to drive people to view this. And in the description below, it's going to have all of your contact information, your URL to your agent portal or your agent profile page. And then you can hopefully gather additional leads. So think about all of this and, and you might say, well, I'm new or I don't have a lot of that going on or I just don't know if I have anything to mention or if I'm boring or anything like that. Remember this quote from Gary Vaynerchuk, who's a very uh, well-known uh, person who has grown his businesses by leaps and bound by using social media. If you have nothing to say, you have the documentation of your day. So what that means is if you think that you don't have anything worth going that's happening, anything exciting, you don't have a showing, you don't have any listings, well, you have the documentation of what you're doing on a daily basis when you hustle, when you're researching or prospecting. You can take a quick snapshot of what your desk looks like and says, you know, something like on Instagram, hustling all day or, or doing what I can to find the best home for my clients. You have the documentation of what you do on a daily basis that you can use as content to post to social media. So now we're just going to kind of go through some of, I guess, extra credit, some things that you can think about to give you some ideas of what you can do uh, on social media. Um, so flat lay photography is, as you see it right here, it's just sort of a gridded way from overhead that people are taking photos of the tools of their trade. 
um, and it's just an attractive photo and it's interesting and you know folks like symmetry and order so it's going to be something that draws the eye and then they'll read more about what it is that you're doing just as an example I, I took a photo on the left hand side here I put a few things that I was using during the day at my desk and then I took the photo and then I edited uh, the photo just a little bit so it looked a little bit more poppy and it's ready to go I could do something you know write something uh, on my Instagram page about directing marketing all day long it could be anything, but it's content that you're creating that's giving a look inside what you do on a daily basis so people understand and those people connect with you. Video snippets. Uh, we talked about the videos and these video snippets could be turned into something that could be spread across your other social media, but you're creating little short high value content that doesn't even have to be part of pillar content. It could be a one off of something. Let's say you go and you have the best hamburger that you've ever had for lunch. You can do a quick little video and say, guys, I'm here at Husk having lunch really quick, and this is the most amazing burger that I've ever had. You really gotta come out and try it. It doesn't even have to be trying to be salesy. It's just saying something about the area in which you work, supporting the small business, and it connects people with you in a more transparent way. Out and about snapshots. Um, this is a, a photo by Donna Andriano. And this was not, I mean, it wasn't staged. She took this while she was out doing her thing, and then she did a little editing on it, and it's a fantastic photo. It's extremely visually appealing. Um, it's well composed, but then she wrote about it, and then she also tagged the bicycle shop themselves because if they like that photo, they might ask to share it too, or they might start engagement with you. If they repost it and give you credit, then that's gonna drive more people to, to see you and what you're all about. That's a fantastic thing. You could reverse engineer pillar content. So let's say instead of having a large piece of content that you're gonna break into smaller pieces, let's say like Donna here has taken six fantastic photos around downtown Charleston. Well, she could take those six photos and then she could write a blog post about each one of them, creating pillar content that she could then break apart and use somewhere else. Um, that's another way for you to do that as well. It's a fantastic way. Okay, some posting tips. So at the very least, when you create a post or you share a post, um, write a short lead in. You want to give them an idea of what they might be uh, clicking on and viewing. Um, so make sure it's something interesting. It doesn't have to be long, but just don't dump content and uh, hope that it does something for you. If you post a graphic or an image that does not go to a, a link or an article, make sure you add your URL. If you've got an agent portal or if you want to just send them to agent owned or if you want to send them somewhere else, make sure you put something in there. You always want to be uh, driving people to do a certain thing. Hashtags. So this is a lot of hashtags right here. Um, you don't have to put that many. At least one hashtag can get your post over 12.5% more engagement than if you just posted and left it alone. So consider doing, you know, four or five 10 if you're feeling saucy, 30 is the max suggested, but you don't have to do that every time. You have to, that's a lot of typing. But just consider what those hashtags might be. And we'll have a class later on about hashtags and Instagram and some tools that will help you find the best hashtags. But consider putting a few in there. Um, realtor, real estate agent, uh, downtown Charleston, whatever it is that is related to what you're viewing, it's gonna show up in other people's feeds and that could drive traffic to you. Photo tips. But if you use an app like Snapseed, that gives your um, images a little bit of pop. You don't want to go crazy with it because you don't want it to look fake, but you want to maybe spice it up just a little bit more um, like this photo. So you'll see my before photo and then you see the after photo where it just brightens it up, makes it look more inviting and appealing, and it's, uh, it really drives people to take a look. Okay, so that's really pretty much it. So just remember, you don't have to do every social media uh, platform that there is, but um, I would highly recommend that you do something. Uh, Facebook is the, the big dog, so consider being on there with a Facebook business page, and it really allows you to reach much more people for a lot less uh, investment, except for time. And then there's, there's even ways that you can uh, shorten that time down so that you're not sitting in front of the computer all the time, because you gotta get out there and sell houses. But people spend about three hours a day, um, that's the number, three hours a day on social media. So if you're on there, you can at least catch them at some, at some point during that time. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at joe.acres at agentown.com, and I will see you on the next video.